Greetings, dear friends. Operational situation at the front on the 6th of February. We will start with you, of course, of the skopinsko lemansky direction from the area of settlements Tebyevka, Starch. We missed previous broadcasts of this area, a minimum of comments. The situation is relatively stable, let's say so, despite the fact that fresh reserves from the Russian troops were transferred and put into battle. The AFU defense forces managed to relatively stabilize the situation in this sector of the front. Although it should be emphasized that the enemy is pressing, and there is information about this today, but still he failed to advance between Tebyevka and Kotlyarovka, as he assumed, although there are further attempts on his part, west of Tebyevka to the dominant heights, and from the Starch district in the direction of Berostovaya and Sandy between these settlements points, well, and in the western direction, were also taken. The fighting within the gray zone remains, and today has a positional character. Naturally, we talked with you, one of the tactics chosen by the enemy, is of course, a work of attrition, and it continues. But again, we do not record any new advances, because relative stabilization has occurred in this sector of the front. Lyman Direction Here of course, we have talked with you, previous broadcasts, that the enemy is pressing not only in the area of Yarev, 3 Yarev, but also in the area of the round beam, mainly in the north direction, that is on its, so to speak, green, that is, on a small landing. And unfortunately, today, we are recording the enemy's further advance. In this sector of the front, the eastern Turnev advanced in the area of the Kruglai beam, in its northern part, northeastern, and accordingly, in the Laptev Yar. We have said that the main fighting is taking place in the center of the gray zone, and unfortunately, we are recording further progress in this area. Therefore, on a site up to 1 km wide, to a depth of 420 meters, we record the enemy's progress. Also, the eastern Yampolovka managed to advance Yar, the fighting was going on, we discussed it with you two days ago. I'm snapping a frame from drones. It means that Russian troops, as you remember, with the support of three armored vehicles attacked the southern part of the Yar. And then these three units were shot down and destroyed. It was possible to repel this attack, but subsequently the enemy of the dream has already attacked and continues to attack. That is, there are quite large forces involved in general on this section of the front. Terny Yampolovka and Atorskaya are similarly involved. Therefore it also has an advance on a front section up to 600 meters wide to a depth of 450 meters. The difficult situation remains in this sector of the front and active hostilities continue. At the same time, there is activity that we talked about in the previous days, this direction, let's say Torsky. So, Two fresh videos were published yesterday. The Russian troops are trying to pull up their armored vehicles as much as possible to the forward positions, or, more simply, to the junction with the gray zone, they managed to destroy it, knock out the area with drones about the area that we will have, that is, by geolinking frames from drones. But actually, it was logical that they would attack here, because it was also not so much their Torskaya, that they were interested in, as in supplies, the supply road, to take control of the Rakata section, at least under partial fire control, even taking into account the fact that they could occupy some part of the Dalny Yar. This is quite possible, therefore, a bet is placed on it, and of course, they attack with the widest possible coverage, between Yampolovka and Torsky, but we do not fix any changes here, it is possible to restrain the enemy, but I repeat, I used large forces. Balogorovka. Yesterday there were reports that the enemy is attacking again, attacking from the area of the industrial zone southeast of Balogorovka. The main effort is being made southeast of Balogorovka itself, not only the industrial zone, but also the forest belt area. Active military operations in this sector of the front continue. As you remember, there was a very big bet on Balogorovka a few weeks ago, 
on the part of the enemy. It was then possible to counterattack somewhere, to stabilize the situation somewhere. But the enemy does not abandon attempts to improve the tactical situation here and break through to the settlement itself. Therefore, the fighting continues actively. In the Bakhmut direction, the northern flank does not record any changes, the positional nature of the fighting, including in Bogdanovka itself. The southern flank is between Ivanovsky and Kleshevka. Let's go right behind Ivanovskaya. A small section of the gray zone has been added, many may have noticed, because a lot of different information is coming. And it is contradictory. And at the same time, the enemy is, yes, trying to gain a foothold in the direction of Ivanovska. Along the forest belts, along one of the landings north of the highway, so now his small infantry groups are working on this site. So this the area was moved to the gray zone and remains under refinement because the enemy is now conducting attacks. Similarly, the area between Ivanovskoy and Kleshevka remains active. In general, it is natural that we have open fields where Russian troops are trying to break through to the forest belts, forest belts, and catch on, gain a foothold for them. The situation remains dynamic, without significant changes. But we see that activity in this sector of the front is again quite high, and I would not say that this is as much Kleshevka, as the vector of their attacks is already changing at Ivanovska. And most likely, it is not the dominant height and the Kleshevsky fortified area that they will be interested in in the near future, namely specifically to break into the Ivanovo itself. But here we will look at the situation. To date, we state that it is possible to repel most of the attacks, but the enemy also does not abandon attempts, as in the Lemansky direction, to break through to the settlement to its eastern outskirts. We are moving to the Avdiivka direction. Of course, we will start with you from the northern flank. Yesterday, as you remember, I criticized a number of statements that supposedly everything is fine, stabilized. Allegedly the situation in the north of Avdiivka, but in fact, the fighters from the field directly report that the situation is very very difficult, because we just said on last night's broadcast that the Russian attack the troops not only from the Garden Association Avushkatu and Avushka in the south direction, but also from the area of treatment facilities to the neighboring Garden Association are making a very big bet, and accordingly they are pulling up forces on this section of the front. To date, we are recording enemy advances in this area, in aggregate, on a front section up to 820 meters wide, to a depth of 230 meters. And the clarifications added in the northernmost part of Abdiivka. Therefore, active hostilities are continuing now. Not only the area where it was marked with arrows, there are also attempts at the sand quarry to, of course, approach its shores, take control of the road section completely. In other words, we have active hostilities in principle. Let's talk right now, today they are already continuing in the gray zone. A difficult, very difficult and difficult situation. This is if we speak in fact, according to reports from the field, according to visual data that we have from this site. It's a very difficult situation. So the enemy does not hide that his main task is to cut the Afu forces in two in a populated area, that is, to break through conditionally further in the southwest direction, in the west direction, as far as possible. That is, to Industrial Avenue and the Highway 00542, a section of the highway, their intersection. This is the area that the enemy is most interested in right now, they are making a huge bet on it. So the fighters report directly from the field that there are a lot of air bomb arrivals along Avdivsky as Sohim, because, well, actually, the enemy is trying to destroy as much as possible all the buildings that exist in this area in order to break through. And so on to say, divide the Avdiivka garrison in two, into Avdiivka as a Sohim and a multi-story building. Therefore, active hostilities continue in this sector of the front, the situation is very difficult. As for the Kamenka area to the south, southwest of Kamenka, in the area of the Garden Association Rainbow, the dominant height. There are also attacks from the enemy, but it is possible to restrain, repel these attacks, so we do not record any new changes. But at the same time, 
The enemy's goal is also clear. It means the dominant height. It is not to take it head on by storm, but to try to advance along the neighboring garden association and accordingly conduct offensive actions with a wider coverage. Plus, but we say this is the most pessimistic scenario, because this can only be said if the located Eastern Garden partnership with the fortified area also falls, and the enemy can take control of it. Then yes, his advance south of the rainbow can be considered more seriously, and accordingly he will have more stable flanking positions. To date, positional warfare continues on the southern flank. It means that footage of a counterattack by Bradley was published here. Footage was published by the enemy, so we drove along Chernyshevsky Street, worked on one of the positions of the Russian troops. Bradley was blown up by a mine, but the entire crew survived. This is also an anti-tank mini. This is the difference between Western armored vehicles. It's not the first time we see such shots, but the crew remains alive, and most importantly, they retreated to their original positions. At the same time, a gray zone has been added, where the Apu has worked, where there is definitely no longer a position of Russian troops. Therefore, the situation today looks something like this. But at the same time, these shots confirm and refute a number of statements that allegedly Russian troops were knocked out of Chernyshevsky, Sportivnaya and Sobornaya streets. No, oh, they are present, and combat work is going on in this area with varying success. Because if we speak for the southern flank, as yesterday, today I repeat, that it also turned out to stabilize the situation relatively. Although the enemy is very very pressing, and naturally, what is happening now on the northern flank of the Avdiivka direction, northern Avdiivka in its northern part, this naturally has a very very strong effect on the fighting. The events that we will continue to have, including on the southern flank, it is very important to understand. Because, of course, if the enemy manages to cut our garrison and create very, very unpleasant moments, semi vertigo. In order not to fall into the cauldron, they will be forced to retreat. But we say this for the worst case scenario that is possible today. So, active hostilities continue. On May Day, I will briefly comment on the fact that the fighting continues. They continue not only as we commented yesterday, along Pasharain and Voroshilev streets. There are also attempts by the enemy to advance along the fields here, approximately along this area, that is, in a westerly direction, and accordingly, to align the front line relatively, and get advanced positions. These positions in the open field, what are they important for the enemy? As in the Ismailovsky Stavka area, when they occupied one of the positions in its northern part, there were drone operators and, accordingly, drone operators, and ensured the further advancement of the Russian group. Therefore, attempts are being made to advance between Pervomaisky and Vodian. Therefore, combat work continues on this sector of the front. Kurikovsky direction, together with Krasnogorovka we will disassemble it. So, we have already talked on previous broadcasts the day before yesterday, analyzing the geolinking of drone footage on the evening broadcast the day before yesterday. Then we noted that one of the mainstays came under the control of the enemy. To date, there is further information that Russian troops have advanced further to a depth of up to 220 meters. The current situation is as follows. That is, despite the fact that the Apu managed to repel the attack then, and an attempt was made by the main Russian troops to gain a foothold at the T-shaped intersection and in general at the northern forest belt. It was then possible to repel this attack. Further attempts are being made along the neighboring forest belt. Well, yesterday we also said on the evening broadcast that work is underway in the conditional direction of Krasnogorovka. That is, in this direction. It has a positional character, but it is extremely important for the enemy in order to align the front line and take more advantageous positions approximately along the forest belt and the eastern part of Georgievka. According to Georgievka itself, we do not record any changes. Moreover, the enemy published footage of a counterattack by a tank, which means that the Russian position was hit by a tank, and in fact, the enemy confirms the tank crew leaves the Apu equipment.
retreated to their original positions, the crew remained alive, which, as in the case of Bradley, is very very good. Therefore, unfortunately, we do not record any positive changes. But the most important thing is that the life of the warriors, they survived, retreated to their original positions. The enemy holds these positions quite firmly, as we can see, and as you can see, they are making counterattacks everywhere. So they are doing everything possible absolutely on the entire front to stabilize the situation. But the situation is very, very difficult, let's be blunt. At the same time, the enemy today states that further progress along even the eastern part of Georgievka, it will be difficult, because it is not Zena. Control of the heights remains with the Yapu, plus the heights of Krasnogorovka, and this creates a rather difficult situation for Russian troops to advance in Georgievka itself, in the eastern part, when the Yapu controls Krasnogorovka, and at the same time for victory. This is specifically a Russian soldier who dismantled this section of the front. We discussed with you before, back in December, that I hardly consider Georgievka, I only told you that they would trar, because it means everything that is south of the Georgievsky rate, there is a fairly large fortified area in the cellular partnership, and it will not be so easy for Russian troops to pass it, taking into account the specifics, taking into account the fact that there may be a flank strike from victory, so they will not be able to stretch out across the fields. And in fact, they have now tried to implement what we said in the eastern part, but Krasnogorovka prevents them. Therefore, there is likely to be, as I say, an attempt to align the front line and neighboring areas, to exert more pressure specifically on Novomikhailovka. Well, we move on to the south Donetsk direction of Novomikhailovka. It means that yesterday evening, the enemy reported information that has already been confirmed to date by our sources. They attacked with large forces, with the support of armored vehicles, from the east, southeast, and south of Novomikhailovka, there are attacks. The settlement itself, and according to reports, if we say what the enemy states, what he reports, they managed to enter the eastern outskirts of both the settlement and the southeastern outskirts. But actually, the fact that Russian sources have started writing a lot about it. This, in fact, caused some resonances, naturally on our part, including close attention to this section of the front, and everything necessary is being done to stabilize the situation. Therefore, the attacks continue, active hostilities on this sector of the front from the enemy continue. The only thing that has been added, is that the gray zone, since the situation remains quite dynamic, and based on the information that is available, the Russian command is also transferring fresh reserves to this sector of the front, and putting them into battle, in order to develop success in east-southeastern parts of Novomikhailovka. 